All right, hello everybody. Uh, I wanted to take a little bit of time in this uh, video walkthrough just to go over the next part of this process uh, of writing our draft annotations, our first set of draft annotations. I'm gonna ask that everybody do another round of draft annotations, you know, next week. Um, but uh, for the time being, your goal for our class on Monday is to have watched the video that I'm creating right now, okay? Um, and reply to three peer posts. Um, you can include your own group members in this number, okay? And then in your replies, what I'd like you to do is offer sample revisions and general comments to strengthen each annotation your peer has drafted, okay? So that's the goal. Um, and um, what we're gonna do, what I wanna do is show you um, with my examples, okay? So if you remember, here are the places where I've created drafts, okay? And one of the things I do want you to notice, okay, is that these are pretty substantial annotation drafts, okay? This one is pretty brief because it's only, you know, it's just a definition, right? But I do have other annotations that are longer, okay? You should have a mixture of uh, context annotations like this one, Okay, what is this? What is a private school in the 18th century? Um, how does that help us understand what uh, is being discussed here? Um, and what are key words that that need to be explained? Okay, not every word is going to be a key word that needs to be explained. All right, that's a really challenging line to um, you know to straddle there. Okay, so for your um, revision assignment, what I'm asking for each student to do, okay, is um, read through the annotations of three peer posts, okay, um, and offer revisions to each of the annotations in the post, okay. I'd like you to use this model that I have here, okay, and um, don't forget to offer feedback about the annotations overall. In particular, if those annotations are even worthy of being annotated, okay? Keep in mind that our goal is to create uh, a digital edition of Lady Susan that has annotated key issues and ideas that need to be annotated in order to be fully understood. Okay, so that the text as a whole can be fully understood. Okay, so um, overall, I felt that these draft annotations um, that I'm looking at uh, that I created are pretty good, but I think they can all be condensed and revised a little bit more, um, you know, and, and typos uh, can be corrected. Okay, remember we're writing in complete sentences and uh, our annotation should reflect a tone and a style that is appropriate to public display, okay? So in your three replies, I'd like you um, first to offer revisions to all of your peer annotations. Um, you can copy and paste the annotations into your reply and then make your, re your revisions, highlighting your changes so we can see them. Um, you don't need to explain what you did, but if it helps you talk through it, feel free. And then don't forget to also, right, as I mentioned up here, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, to add any additional uh, questions and comments you might have about the significance of these annotations, okay? So um, here are my annotations that I've copied and pasted, and what I've done is I've revised directly here, but I've highlighted the places where there are significant changes, okay? So here's the very simple OED definition. According to the OED, I had to add a comma there, right? This means going out and mixing in private society. Da, 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 da. What I've done is I've added a sentence here that explains why this is important, okay? Lady Susan is suggesting somewhat disingenuously that the main wearings go out too much for her, right? Um, we know that's not true because she loves to go out. She loves to be amongst people, okay? Um, in letter one, uh, again, here's the, um, the thing that I'm annotating and the annotation itself. Um, about private schools, boarding schools, okay? Overall, what I did was I moved the sentence about cost to the end, this last sentence here. 
I moved it about cost. I, sorry, I moved it to the end um, because it doesn't really connect with the subject and the transition is actually better without it. What I'd probably want to do is um, actually make a new annotation that's just about the cost of a boarding school. I'd use the same source and everything, um, but I'd, I'd create a new um, annotation that's about the cost of the boarding school, and I'd, I'd, I'd actually make it a new annotation at that place where Lady Susan writes to Alicia about how she doesn't think she's going to be able to pay for it. The cost is immense, she says. Okay, So I would actually cut this, Okay, probably, and add it to a new, a new annotation about the cost of boarding schools, okay? Because at that, at this point in the, the letter, she's not talking about cost. We don't need to know about cost. Um, she doesn't say anything about it, okay? So we could leave it here if we wanted to, but it'd probably be better if we put it in a new annotation later, okay? So one of the things I've done is I have corrected um, the first sentence, okay? Uh, because we're, sh this is a book of essays, um, that are all authored by individual people, right? So we should talk about this specific essay. According to this author's article on women in education in, and here's another typo, this needs to be italicized, women's history, Britain, 1700 to 1850, in the Enlightenment period, um, the, girl, uh, the education of girls was increasing in importance. So what I've done here is I've clarified um, the source, being, I've tried to be accurate about the source, uh, and then what I've done is I've given a time context, right? Because that matters. Um, and I've eliminated the tonal issues here. Instead of a hot topic, right? I'm trying um, to be a little bit more um, formal. So I wanted to say that education of girls was increasing in importance. Um, I also added a word here to clarify uh, class, right? Because, you know, we may not automatically assume that means socioeconomic class. So I wanted to clarify that. And I condensed here um, about educating their mind while teaching good morals and behavior, because really um, in the, the article that I read, it, this is the most important thing to teach good morals and behavior. Um, and then I focused on what the curriculum was like and, and so on. So this is a very objective context, um, context heavy information, you know, annotation that tells me a little bit about what private schools are in the 18th century, okay? Um, letter two, this four months a widow, okay? I've done a few things here. Um, I would probably cut the introductory bit and just add the author's name to the citation because it's not usual for us to foreground encyclopedia titles or authors, um, but I would spend a little bit of time to situate it historically and add clarification to that patriarchal threat part. Like, why is it a threat um, that, uh, that, that um, uh, why are widows a threat to the patriarchal order? I might add a little bit of context to explain that, okay? So in the 18th and 19th centuries, when a woman's husband died, the widow was usually negatively economically impacted. However, widows, unlike wives, uh, had a higher degree of authority and power over their own economic lives and that of their children because they became legal heads of household. This empowerment threatened the patriarchal order, which depended on economic subordination of women. So I've added that clarification, okay? Uh, in addition, widows in the 18th century were often depicted as dangerously sexual because they were not legally owned by a husband. Um, women were expected to mourn publicly for prolonged periods of time by withdrawing from social life and wearing kind, particular kinds of clothing. So um, I've moved the author's name from up here and what this kind of source was. I just cut it and I put her last name here as you would do in an MLA format and put a link to um, the, the article actually on the title. If I were to do this again, I in when, before I post this, actually, what I would probably do before I turn this into H, uh, XML, what I would actually do is is cut this even further. I notice there's repetition in this, however, and this, however, um, and I also notice that I've used degree of authority and power. I would just choose one authority or power instead of doubling up on that to condense. Okay. Um, the same thing here in letter in uh, the Guardian um, section. Uh, instead of having a big wind up, this introductory bit that has um, sort of a wind up, I, I would just zip right into it. In guardianship in the 18th century was a legal mechanism, right? Um, instead of the article English Custody Law by Sarah Abramowitz points out that guardianship in, okay? I would cut cut all of that, cut all of that wind up and just dip, dive right into it. Guardianship in the 18th century, right? 
Um, and then I would put author's name and title here in parentheses with, of course, the page number, which is necessary. Um, I've added a sentence here that just explains um, a little bit more because I realized as I was going back that uh, the, the part that draws on um, curvature is actually also a, a source that needs citation. So this annotation has two sources in it, both of which I'm quoting from or paraphrasing from, okay? So I had to revise that. In marriage, daughters were subsumed into the legal identity of their husbands under the law of curvature, right? Um, you might even put a link from the word curvature to, to a definition, right, that you find online, kind of like what I'm doing here um, in my paraphrase. Um, so um, also in that sentence, I revised the language just to emphasize that parent-child relationship, right? Daughters were subsumed in legal authority of their husbands under the, okay? Um, and then finally, letter four, the coquette example. Remember, this is another OED definition, okay? So it's gonna be fairly um, brief, but remember, I've added a little bit more information. So, um, but with another re a reference um, that people might find interesting. So I didn't do too much of this information. I just cut out some repetition and typos um, here instead of uh, saying that she's very visible and almost indeed almost inescapable in the 18th, cent 18th century literature and culture. Um, I, I cut the redundancy, okay? You don't need to say things twice when saying it once is enough. Um, and uh, I cut out a little bit here between these two sentences, okay? So um, what I'd like you to do again is to reply to three peer posts and offer revisions for each annotation in those posts, okay? Like I've done here. Um, use the model that I've created um, for you. But remember, also offer feedback about whether these t annotations are actually um, you know, good in and of themselves, right? Are these appropriate things that need annotation, all right? Um, if they're not significant, you should really point that out, okay? That's gonna be important. Um, overall, uh, these drafts I thought were looking pretty good, but I could still condense and explain. Um, and, um, and what I've done is I've copied and pasted the annotations into my reply, and then I've made my revisions and highlighted my change so that we could see what we did, okay? Um, all right, so um, this project, this portion of the project, right, is due by the 20th, um, and I will post this video up here. What we're gonna do next, all right, is uh, another round of annotation creation, and I'm gonna be very explicit about not wanting just OED definitions, okay? Remember that you can go back to your um, grades for your notes assignments, uh, in Canvas, and I will have added a substantial comment there on everybody's notes that I received, giving you examples of what makes for a strong subject for annotation, okay? Not all words, just because we don't know them, need an annotation, okay? Um, some words do, like artifice or um, coquette, right? But those are words that are that are unique, right? They're unique to this time period. They refer to a whole set of cultural contexts, okay? Um, so just be aware that um, your annotation should be more substantial than just this all the time, okay? And even if you do have more OED definitions than not, um, you still need to have uh, issues that you are annotating that are worthwhile, that are significant either for the context that we're looking at or for the novel as a whole, okay? For the overall story of Lady Susan. And in this one, you know, of course, going into society is important because um, she talks about this quite a bit um, as um, throughout the letters as a means to, you know, set herself up as more moral than other people, okay? Um, so it's part of her manipulative strategy, okay? Um, all right, so um, happy revising, okay? Um, I'm gonna set the deadline to this to midnight of the 20th, okay? Uh, so by, the min by midnight on the 20th, please have watched this video and um, done your revisions, okay? Thank you very much. Let me know, as always, if you have questions.